Good day, brothers in the Lord. Welcome once more to yet another edition of your favorite program, Inside the Bible. You will notice that for a while we haven't been around to do this um, Christian Midweek Show program because we were trying to renovate um, our new studio. As you can see, the backdrop of the last studio is not the same, so we are going somewhere. A journey with a of a thousand miles begins with the first step. So today we are here to do God's business. I am your host, the evangelist, and with me in the studio is Minister Lilia Cho. Minister, you're welcome. Thank you, sir. So, Minister, today we are going to be talking about how do we bring up a child in a in a godly manner yes. you know in in africa this topic it i may say it's a little bit easier to go about it because then you can always decide that this is how i want to bring up my children but here yes. we are in another part of the world in europe where your children are not just being brought up by so viewers, if you are watching, you have our numbers on the screen, you can call, you can SMS, we are going to read your comment. If it's the questions, we are going to answer the question. If it's for me or it's for minister, or you are also free to ask questions through, um, you can send your comments through um, Facebook because it's going on live now on Facebook at the same time going live on YouTube or Toko Media Studios um, page on YouTube. So you are yeah. free to comment. So Minister, before we go into this very, very important topic, let's yes. first of all know who is mm -hmm. Minister Lilian Cho. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. I am privileged to be on this program. I bless God for this work that is going on and uh, for everyone that is watching. God bless you. Yes, uh, my name is Lillian Chong, Mrs. I am married. I've been married. It's now coming to 13 years wonderful thing to be. I am a mother of four. I am living apparently right now in Sweden and uh, I love the Lord very much. As you can hear, Minister Lillian, I serve in the ministry under RCCG. RCCG is a, a big, world-renowned church ministry but I serve here under it in Hampstead, in a city called Hampstead. I am a minister in the gospel. I mainly teach the children. As I guess you can see, that's why the topic is handling about children. Yeah, I, <laughs> I love see children that. with a passion, yes. That is a bit of me. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Minister Lilian Cho, thank you very much for letting us know who exactly is Minister Lilian Cho. Because you'll yes. be seeing her on this program and you wouldn't have the opportunity to know who is Minister Lilian Cho all the time. So since she's yes. coming um, to this program for the first time, it's very important that we know exactly who she is. If you want to google her you can go to maybe facebook and go to lillian cho and you can see the the works that she's doing so let's go to the business why we're here today this which is god's business we are going yes. to start uh, minister the book of proverbs 22 6 says train up a child in the way he should go even mm. when he is old he will not depart from it yes how do we do that yeah that is a wonderful question uh it's 
sounds easy, yet it's not so easy. Um, mainly training up a child, there are many ways of training up a child. I will share a bit on how to train up a child in, in a godly way that you may not depart from it. First and foremost, you have to have Christ in you. You have to have Christ in you. How do you have Christ in you? You accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's the first key point for anyone who wants to train up a child in a godly way. You have to be yourself in Christ. You have to do Jesus as your personal savior. And you have to have that love for Jesus. Because like we know, the Bible says that in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So if you believe in Jesus, I'm very sure you want to train your children to believe in Jesus. Yeah. Basically, we start like that. Okay. We, we live in a part in the, in the world where it is not... Um, it is not allowed by law to beat a child. But we, yeah. we are coming from Africa. I will tell you, sometime in my life, when I was in school, I used to be like the most stubborn student in the school. For those who are watching me, that knows me, my brother, Sammy Black, all the way from um, Canada. Thank you also, mm -hmm. uh, my brother, Rudy Dallas. You are blessed. Please remember to share. I used to be like one of the most stubborn students, you know, that everybody can tell this guy is really stubborn. But it came to a point where I joined a certain group of uh, 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 um, boys that I wasn't going to school. And this message left the school and got to my mom and I was well beaten. And... Mm. Each time I think it, she doesn't even need to tell me you need to go to school, you need to do well. Each time I think about the beating alone, mm. I will go to school and I will sit at the very first desk in the class so that the teacher should see me. Not, not, not like it's like it's. I don't want that information to get to my mother that it's like I was in in school. So I sit at the first desk, you know, just so that the, just for the teacher to see me, to know that yes, this person was there. It should not confuse me for anybody. Other people say when you beat the child, oh, you, you traumatize the child. But the Bible says in the book of Proverbs twenty three thirteen, it says, "Do not withhold correction from a child, for if you beat him with a rod, he would not die." How do we train, how do we bring up a child in the way of the Lord in this part of the world where the Bible, which is our beliefs, says if you beat the child, the child will not die. But mm. then the law says don't. How do we manage that, minister? Yeah, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> A challenging question but uh, truth be told um, in Africa it's too much beating is too much it's actually flogging they flog the children and create so much fear in us in the children which is not really good it affects the child even as the child grows and in their adulthood and it might transfer to their children and their children children but however, one can discipline the child, of course, like the Bible says, in many other ways. There are many other ways we can discipline our children. Uh, for example, deny them certain privileges, like here they are so much on social media, cut off the social media for some time, uh, give them timeouts here and there, 
and explain why you are doing it and sit them down, talk to them face to face, ask them. And when you do this, you don't do it at a time when they are really angry. You have to wait a certain time when they have go, come down and you sit one on one, which most of us from Africa do not have with our parents. Actually, for most families, you saw the dad as a beast. When daddy comes, you all take off under the bed or in the room, no talking, no what. You know, it was, it's, it's, it's a, contrary to what is happening, what happens in the diaphra, diaphra here. Here you, I mean, you have to talk to the child face to face, discuss, find out why this child is behaving the way it is behaving, discuss. And of course, the Bible says, if you spare the rod and spoil the child, yes. But in this case, the, the law says you should not beat the child. And we also know that the Bible encourages us to obey the laws of the land. So we have to obey the law of the land and not go on smacking our children. But on the other hand, we have to help them by doing the disciplinary part of it. Sit them down, talk to them, find out why they're doing this, Maybe you're not in a position to talk to your child yourself. Find a family friend. Find maybe someone in authority here. For example, in the country where I am, you can get all kinds of help. Use that advantage and you will get the help. And of course, as you are parents, as you take your place of prayer, pray for your child. Love them. Yes. <laughs> Pray for your child, love them. You made a, yes. a point um, about um, fathers being like monster when they come. Mm. Everybody runs away. We are going to go yes. into that. But first, I want to tell our viewers, please, if you are watching, remember today we are blessed to bless others. Each time... Mm. The Holy Spirit leads us to bring up a topic like this. It's, it may not be for me, it may not be for minister, it may not, may not be for you that is watching. But it may be for somebody in Australia, in Dubai, in Canada, it may be for somebody somewhere. So it's very important that you share when you are watching because it's another form of evangelism. We never know who is going to be touched by this. Minister, yes. I go back to your to your point mm. about if our parents come, people run away and all that. Now, I, before I move forward, I think we have uh, a comment from our sister, um, Momirit, the sister next door. Yes. Great job, Mama Lillian. But which of the disciplinary measures produces better results um which of the dis disciplinary measures produce better results um momirit is it um are you talking of beating and not beating and just taking the the ways of uh, the european system is it the measures that you are you are talking about maybe you can um, give us more comments so we understand better what you mean but minister if you can try a little bit to understand what she is talking about she says which of the measures mm. yeah yes. I, I think is it the african I'll, measure I'll... or the european because the european <laughs> measure says don't beat the child so yes. it means you can join the child and pray Africa follows the Bible. Will you pray for the child? Yes. But you still use the rod to correct the child. Now, yes. she's asking, these two measures, she yes. said, which of them produces, because it's not a matter of the measures, but mm. which of them produce a better 
resort yes uh, to answer thank you so much for the question mami reads uh, to answer you a bit yeah i will say that uh, if if you look at it in the african content probably you would say that the african way produces results <laughs> because as uh, my brother the evangelist has said he was smacked and that straightened him up to sit at the front of the desk of the class and never to skip school that helped him in that time but uh, <laughs> because there was no law to even cover him poor boy he had to eh, to go through the pain and he learned his lesson but on the other side if you're not in africa by law you are not supposed to smack a child no you cannot do it if you do it and the child goes and tells the authorities it's a big problem it's a case you can be in prison the child can be taken away i mean it brings it will add more problems to what you are trying to solve actually so it may not help you you the child will even go more wild maybe that is depending on how you have which relationship you have with the child the child is too wild the child will even get worse because they have the support of the system but then if the child is not wild maybe the child will be learn from it I, I i cannot tell that part of it but however i will still stick to my point that as the laws of the land say we should obey the laws of the land that's why we see in the bible jesus said uh, give to caesar what belongs to caesar and to do what belongs to god that is he was saying in the other words obey the land the laws of the land obey the laws of this land and it will be okay with you so i think to keep our hands clean and to keep us free and to have joy let us not <laughs> bring so much of our african smacking in the picture it will not help these children are taught from the time they are starting school they are taught the rules and the laws and they have all the contacts so that's why you find that most of our brothers and sisters get into trouble with the authorities and the children are taken here and there and then you start praying heaven down to bring back your children yet there are so many other ways we can talk to them and train them in the way that they should grow and they will not depart from it as we are seeing amen, amen. i hope i've answered that question yeah. <laughs> Minister, yeah. I I believe you have explained the the point, but I think yeah. it was a it it was a question like which of them produce a better result. It's just about I think the European system produce a better result, or I think the African system produce a better result. You know, which, it depends on how you're seeing it. Result? Yes, I know. You, it depends on how you're seeing it. Now, for that's why I gave an example of you. You, in your, in, in your growing up, it produced a better result because you aligned and then you started doing the right thing. But again, if it is now in the European standard, if you go and smack this child, do you think it will produce a better result? I don't know. So it is both ways. Because we see that even those who are not being smacked here, they are being grown up well, they have become responsible. I mean, that's why we are here. We see that they have not lost it all. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, um, if I may attempt to ask this, to answer this question, I think this question is a good point for more of yes. a conclusion yes. because no matter what we say the most important thing is to find out which side because if we look at africa i i i don't know because when we we're growing up my my dad was very lovely she he i say she he will give you whatever thing you want 
but he sets a standard that touch this and don't touch this and he doesn't compromise with that you look like ed education in africa a child of maybe five six years refuse that he or she doesn't want to go to school i don't think as a mother you need to compromise with that child just like the bible says that you should smack the child i don't think you should compromise with the child because one the child doesn't understand what this education is all about yes if i look back today i say yeah it's good that i was actually smacked because if you were just to talk i wouldn't have listened Today, I wouldn't have been who I am. Maybe I would have been on the streets, maybe hugging and doing other sort of things to meet up with life because I didn't go to school or, or, or all that. But mm -hmm. she could tell that I don't want to go to school. It is not something that she has to compromise with me because I didn't know what was good for me. So she has to come in and decide as the mother and say, this is what is good for you. And I'm going to tell you, this is what is good for you. And you are going to follow it. And when you get to 18 years, you can now decide what you want. That's why the Bible says, train up a child that when he or she grows up, it did not say train up the child when so that the child should know because then the child doesn't actually understand the, the right from the wrong so you have to train this child then what is the result of your training is when this child grow up what happened the child will not depart from the lord why because you brought this child up in the way of the lord which means that at a certain level of this child's life, this child doesn't know left from right. So you as the as, as a parent, you have to now direct these children that this is for you. But we look at the case of Europe, maybe a child doesn't want to go to school. And then we see the we see the, the, the mother comes down and sit with the child and start crying, you know, begging the child. And the child still says, I don't want to go to school. Now, no matter what you say, the child says, I don't want to go to school. You are going to, in Europe, you bring social counselor, you bring this, you bring that. The child stands that, I don't want to go to school. I don't want to go to school. And this child is saying, I don't want to go to school. This child doesn't know what is good and what is bad. But in Africa, we decide for the children what is right for them. I think this is where the Bible seems to say, if you beat the child with a rod. I think there's a difference between you smacking the child and you actually molesting a child. Because I totally agree with you. There are times, there are some men that, even women, that they have their own frustration. And when they get home, they think they will use these children to take out their frustration. I think that is when you have to stop from not beating the, ch the, the child. It, if we divert a little bit, it goes to even adults. In Africa, a man is angry, you see, just slap the the wife but in europe that doesn't happen whether it's a child whether it's, a, it's, it's an adult you don't have the right to smack somebody so i think the, the what we should be we have a, a comments and i think contributions from a mm. mommy read and from a minister fanny b that we are going to read but if yes. i have to um, conclude here i will say we should ask ourselves if the african system to smack a child it's good what are the results that we get from our children in africa we have manners i'm in europe but i can stand in front of 
every single square in Europe to tell everybody that the children brought up in Africa are well mannered. Mm. They are well cultured. You cannot call a child, you, you, a child cannot call a father by the first name. No, 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 no. That doesn't happen. But here in Europe, the child will just call the mother Grace, Lydia. It's, it, it's also dis, disrespectful. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise the yeah, Lord. Let me just conclude, please. But I ask myself, why is it that there is so much progress in terms of the children in Europe than the children in Africa that we think they are well cultured? I think then we conclude by saying because they have a good system. Yeah, Minister, you can go on before we take the comments on the comments list. Yes, um, Carl, you are talking about culture. I want to recap a bit. Of yeah. course, uh, as we are saying that Af a child in children in Africa are well mannered. Uh, yes, that's true. But uh, you know the cultures differ. Here they mm -hmm. are taught from their kindergartens. They are taught to call their parents their parents' names by their first names. I mean, it's just okay. It's not that they are being disrespectful. They just teach the children who is your, what is your dad's name, what is your mom's name. I remember my son; he was about two years. And the dad went to pick him, and he was calling the dad by the name, and the dad was shocked. Oh, what? And uh, thanks for watching, um, Sister he, Christy. <laughs> he came home and uh, taught the child what he wants the child to learn. And from that time, he has never called the dad by the name. He, he, of course, he can say this is my dad's name, but not calling him like we are saying. He had to explain to him that, uh, you know, I want you to do this like this and like that. Call me by daddy, papa, that's good enough. Not by my first name, it's good to know the name. But that's what they were taught in school. So the cultures differ. That is why it's not that they do it out of disrespect. No, they do it. They can be calling you, but respectfully, they still. But in Africa, of course, we have learned that that is disrespectful. In the, to the extent that you find that you grow up even not knowing the full names of your parents. <laughs> yeah? Until you come to Europe, they will ask you, what's your mom's birthday? I mean, you are not aware that your mom even has a birthday. You know, you don't know when she's born. You don't know her age. I mean, until you come to Europe, you find out, oh, that's when you begin to call and say, mommy, when were you born? What's your age? Because we are not taught those things. Our culture does not allow us. For example, in my, the country I come from, Uganda, you never ask a lady, how old are you? It is like disrespectful. Whereas here, who, whoever can, they can ask you at any one point, how old are you? And I mean, others, it is very free. It is, I mean, it's, it's, it is okay to say your age. Yet okay. the culture okay, I have brought up Lillian, on, I cannot say my age. We are going to take, go to the comment section. We're supposed to have a break with um, Minister Maxwell from Karskrona. For three minutes, yes, that is supposed to be playing or the ministering to us um, a song. So we will yes, see please. if um, uh, Mr. Maxwell is available. But let's go to the comment section because this is why they are here mm -hmm. to to listen to us, and also we have to make them uh, know that we are not um, taking their points not very important. So we have a point from. Uh, Comment from Mommy Reed. He said, Each of the system have loop, loopholes, and what works for A does not work for B. So we should pick the best of both systems, tailor it to fit each child, to each child's need, and above all, pray specific prayers for each unique child, as Mama Lillian 
said. Hello. And we have it from um, Fanny B. He's taking them to church, he said, and teaching them to recite memory verses enough. I think these memory verses will help them to, mm. to really stay in the presence of the Lord. Then they can be walking on the street and saying these memory verses. And then the next point she said is that evangelists, I think you are mixing it a lot. <laughs> yes, you, you, are, you, are, you are right. I know the, the topic <laughs> is for children, but I try yes. to bring other things to think maybe I can use it to to explain yeah. it better but if you say I think I'm mixing it a lot you have a you have a point I will stick mm -hmm. to the topic madam yeah thank you very much for your comment okay mm -hmm. minister you can go on um let's see yeah, if, how um, on uh, uh, as our minister Maxwell is online okay please hallelujah amen uh, how do we raise up a child in a godly way? It's our discussion topic tonight. And uh, we have said first and foremost, you have to be in Christ, you as a parent. You have to have the love of Christ in you, Jesus Christ. And uh, Jesus loves you. Because Jesus loves you, you also have to love others. And this includes your children. You have to have that love for your children. The Bible says that God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That includes your children. It does not exclude them. It includes your children. So as you love Jesus, you love your children and bring them into accepting Jesus Christ. In, of course, by training them in the ways of the Lord. How do you love your children? You love them through teaching them your God's word. If you love somebody, of course, you want to share every good thing with them. The same way you share with your children the word of God. And uh, the Bible says that, but bring them up in the nurture, and nurture them in a domination of the Lord, according to Ephesians um, 6. B. Welcome, Brother Maxwell. <laughs> yes, Brother Maxwell is online, I can see. Yeah, I'll, I'll be concluding so he can take up the praise, the, the worship, or the music seconds or minutes. Yeah, yes. just go on, Minister. Mm -hmm. Let's love our children as Christ has loved us. If you love your children, you will tell them the truth. And the Bible says in the book of John that Jesus, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. So if you love your children, tell them the truth. The truth is Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So tell them the word of God. You cannot uh, teach them any other way if you're not telling them the word of God. Mm. Teach them the Bible. Mm. Do devotions with them at home. Involve them by allowing them to share what they think, what they understand, asking questions and answering them, finding out what they really want to know. Um, have family time. Family time. Family time to maybe family movie time, Christian movie time. These days, because of social, a lot of social media gadgets, you find one child, uh, family members are sitting one on one corner and the other corner, everyone is watching their own <laughs> thing, you don't even know what you're watching. Get a time where you all sit together and watch a Christian movie and after you have watched it, evaluate, ask the children what they have learned. It will amaze you how they, they get certain concepts of the word of God and how they get revelations in what they have heard and seen. Okay, to thank you very you. much. Um, thank you very much, yes. Minister. We are going yes. to um, go to uh, the student Cascrona um, to have a short break for maybe just three minutes to listen to some um, worship songs from Minister Maxwell. 
and then minister we are going to come back um, to get the conclusion because after we talk the most important thing is that we conclude so that when people yes. listen they should be going home saying when i actually listen to this program this is what i got from it mm. you are welcome brother maxwell god bless you so before you with the music who is brother maxwell in just uh, 30 seconds yes my name is maxwell everybody uh, i'm based in uh Taskrona. i am a music uh, producer songwriter um I've, I've been in the music industry for quite some time and also i'm a minister in the within christian church of god and a music director as well um yeah i think yeah that's thank it. you very much for the introduction please can you go on all right I just want to uh, take this worship song and I believe that uh, wherever you are that uh, you fellowship with us today in this song. Light of the world, you step down into darkness, open my eyes and let me see. The beauty that makes this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow. Here I am to say that. You're my God. You are out together, lovely. You are out together, worthy. You are out together, wonderful, wonderful to me. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow. Here I am to say that you're my God. Are together lovely. You are all together worthy. You are all together wonderful, wonderful to me. I'll never know. How much it cost to see my saints upon the cross. Lord, I'll never know how much it cost to see my saints upon the cross. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow, here I am to say that you are my God, you are out together lovely, you are out together worthy, you are out together wonderful. You are wonderful to me. All together, love. You are all together, world. You are all together, wonderful. You are wonderful to me. Lord, we give you praise for your goodness, for your mercy for your loving kindness towards us. To receive 
receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things are for the pleasure they are. The hell well created. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. God, God bless you, man of God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Bless brethren, we are back. Yes. Thank you very much, um, brother, Mr. Maxwell. Mm. Thank you. God that bless was you. very refreshing. Yes. And we are blessed. So please, if you are watching, don't forget to share. Like we say from the beginning, it may not be for you. This is Wisdom and Solution Fellowship International. It's just a platform, Christian fellowship platform. It's not under the banner of any church. Just like Minister Lillian uh, um, said, she's under the banner of Redeem. Tomorrow we may have another uh, minister from another banner, from another church. Maybe if we had Mommy Reed, Mommy Reed to say I'm under another banner of another church. So it's just a platform where we invite ministers to talk to light uh, minor topics that will help Christians to grow spiritually. Most of us, we go to church on, on Sundays, but what happened within the week? That's why we call it our midweek program. Some uh, parishes like where we are here in Hampstead, we have Digging Deep, we have House Fellowship. That falls on Tuesdays and Thursdays. What happened on Saturday, on, on, on Wednesdays? What about those who are in areas where they don't have opportunity to have a ministry where they can go to worship? That's why we are here. If on Sundays you worship with a church online and on Wednesday you can join us so we can do God's business in this Christian show together. So, Minister, you make a very pertinent point. Let me go to your point. You said yes, that when we were young and when we see our parents coming, our father coming, we, our dad coming, we are going to run and hide under the bed like a monster and stuff like that. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 1, 8 to 9, I just paraphrase. He said, hear my son, your father's instruction and forsake not your mother's teaching minister yes. when they come to the father they say instruction and when it comes to the to the mother he says teaching mm. so you can you can you can see that we men are like god the father that says let let there be we 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 give we like we we are there for instructions why the women are like the Holy Spirit that have that gently, that gentle spirit that speaks to you. So why is the Bible asking the child to listen to the father's instruction? But when it comes to the mother, it says listening to the teachings. <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. That's an interesting question. Yeah, uh, of course we know that the father is the priest, is the head of the home, and uh, usually if you look at the teachings according to the the Bible, both the New and Old Testament, you find that the priest has a lot of uh, responsibility. Teaching gives instructions, instructions from from the father, that is the father, our God, from God. Usually it was carried out by the priests who are the, they give the instructions. While the, the mothers are there to support and the, to bring, tone it down to the children to understand what the instructions are 
and basically apply them in their lives. That's why we see in the case of um, Jacob, when uh, the father gave an instruction to Esau, but the mother came and uh, turned it down instead to Jacob, and Jacob learned out of it, and at the end of the day, Jacob uh, became uh, was blessed because he, he listened to the mother's advice. Whereas Esau, uh -huh. of course, he, he had the instructions and ran with the instructions, but uh, most likely, had he maybe gone to mom and say, mom, this is what daddy is saying, maybe that mom would have advised him in another way. But since he just ran away, that made him even miss his blessings. He just went because he had his father's instructions. It's always good to balance it up. As the father instructs, the mother is always there to tone you down and explain things more easily for you to understand. That's why what I will say. <laughs> yes. So, Minister, you 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 see the reason why when when the children see the the father coming, they are running away because. <laughs> By nature, we don't know. We don't know how to compromise. Yeah, the, you, the you women mean, they have this gentle way of talking that sings. <laughs> but yes, women, we just shout, it, "Hey!" You go turn left. it down and make the children understand it in in real bits. Like uh, I saw one of the comments, Mami Reed say, uh, uh, you, "You pray for the child in specific prayers for every child." Yes, even in instructing the children instruct them in different ways. Uh, uh, for example, I have four children. I cannot talk to them about the same thing in the same way. I know every child how they will understand it. I have to attend to them in their different understanding levels and explain to them for them to understand and take it in and do it the way they should do it. It does not. It's not like a, a, a school of uh, Let's say an army school where you give one order and everyone has to follow it. No. With children, you have to understand every child at their different levels. That brings me to a certain point when you are how to train up a child in a godly way. Teaching them the Bible, you have to teach them the word of God. And uh, as I, I'm saying, teach them according to your different levels. You cannot read to a two-year-old the, 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 the Bible, like you're reading it for a seven-year-old, it will not work. You have to explain. For example, maybe the two-year-old need more pictures. You cannot say, go divided the sea. The child may not understand. But if you show the picture, then they will, oh, okay. Moses divided the sea like this. They see the picture. They will understand it better than an 11 or 12-year-old. So it is, you teach the children the word of God, but come down to their level. Let them understand it at their level. Every day, that's why there are different Bibles. Thank God, the, the, the body of Christ, they have brought so many Bibles that you can buy a Bible for one year old, for two years, for five, for six, I mean, according to their ages. So it is to help them understand the word of God at their level. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Thanks very much, uh, Minister. We have another comment from uh, Minister Fanny B. He said, that's why fathers need to learn. Yeah, we are not refusing. We we need to learn. By nature, we are, we are very stubborn. So we need to learn. <laughs> yeah, the Bible says in yeah. Third John 1, for he says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Mm. So viewers, as we as we conclude, please, if you have um, similar questions that um, you while studying the word in the Bible and the Holy Spirit leads you to talk about it, you can always send us an email or send us a text message or call we can always talk about it and we can invite you wherever you are in the world um to join us in the studio so we can talk about it as we we round up this um topic i would like to say before i go to minister million to to conclude 
I would like to say if if you if if you if you turn my life around i'll tell you it's also very important that um smacking children it's not the the best way of bringing up children like we do in 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 africa it may have worked for me but we have a lot of children that didn't work for them and today like i was talking with one of my friends unfortunately he's not even from africa he's from italy a different part in europe and he was telling me this part of the of europe their culture is more like part africa part europe and he had beatings also from the parents and that actually affected him that he grew up fighting because when he looks at you he could tell i don't think you can beat me as much as my father could beat me so that way he's not afraid of anybody he's he, he, all the things is just let me go ahead and and fight so i think in africa we can always blend yeah once in a while you can think this child is stubborn you want to smack the child this is what the bible is saying and also on the other part of the world which is europe here they don't smack children if i have my children with me in africa there's a point where they will make me angry maybe i'll smack them because this is how the culture is done that if they are with me here in europe no matter what they do i can't smack them so if you're in africa you think to smack a child it's a way of doing it you are in africa you do it the way they do it in africa but if you come to europe Please, like Ms. Alilia was saying that so many of our sisters have lost their children because of smacking. If you come to Europe, there are also other means that you can use. You are in Europe, God has blessed you with a job. Use your Sunday to bring the children to church and make sure they join the Sunday school department because that is the easiest way to bring children up in the way of the Lord. You can just do it on your own at home, praying for them. But when you bring them to 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 church, I blend it up with um, the comment from Minister Fanny B, and they learn all this um, memory verse from the Bible. So it 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 takes over over them. So they they are now embedded in the Word of God. That way, you don't need to talk too much to these children because they are already embedded in the Word, and this Word now is using it. The, you, you use the words that they know in the Bible to help bring them up in the way of the Lord. And also, like Minister said, there's also a possibility that they have iPads and they have all these things. And you can tell them, if you don't do this, I will not give you the iPad. If I tell you to go out, don't go out. If you go out, I will grant you, I will not give you an iPad. You, we can always get different measures in Europe where we can bring children up without smacking them because of the tradition in europe and also it's very important that we take them to the church to meet other children and we try to make sure that they grow up in sunday school thank you very much um minister lillian do you have a conclusion yes praise the lord Hallelujah. the bible says as we as i conclude the bible says in the book of genesis Chapter 18, verse 19. Chapter, chapter 18, verse 19. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Hallelujah. This Amen. scripture, I love it so much. God was speaking and saying he knew Abraham. In the same way, this scripture should apply to us as parents. Uh, that God knows that you as a Christian uh, are born again or a godly father, mother, that you should bring up your child in the ways of the Lord. You will command your children and your household 
to to work to walk in the ways of the Lord, just like as we have shared, taking them to church, teaching them the word of God, sharing with them, and many other points that uh, basically we have looked at, or we have even more to look at. So we have a role to train them up in the way of the Lord because the Lord knows that we are supposed to do that. That's the only way they will grow up in the ways of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Minister. If there is somebody that is watching us, maybe the person has not been able to know Christ, will be asking you, Minister, how do I bring up my child in the way of the Lord when I don't know the Lord? So if you are watching us and you like to give your life to Christ, uh, Minister, do you, can you lead those who are watching in the way to, to Christ? Yes, the, knowing Christ is you accepting Jesus Christ in your life. The Bible says that in, in John 3.16, I love that scripture very much. For God so loved the world that whosoever believes in him, uh, no, for God so loved the world and he, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes, Jesus Christ is all you need to train, to help you train up your child in a godly way. Uh, by accepting Jesus into your heart, you say this simple prayer. Jesus, Jesus. I accept you into my life. I accept you into my Please life. Please forgive me of all my wrongdoings. Please forgive me. That is my sins in thoughts, in sins. words, in actions. Forgive me. Clean me. Make me a new creature. I accept you into my life today as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are now a child of God. You belong to Jesus. And Jesus will help you in all that you are doing. Get yourself into a, a gathering, Christian gathering, a local church in your neighborhood. You can find a local church, a church, a born, born again Christian church where you can worship with them and tell them you accepted Jesus into your life and God will bless you. Or you can even contact uh, us on this uh, on the numbers here for further questions and guidance as the Holy Spirit will lead us in Jesus' name. Amen. My brother, my sister, distance is not a barrier, it's just the level of your faith that matters. We may be in Europe holding this program. You may be in Canada, you may be in Australia, you may be in South America. As long as you have prayed this simple prayer with Minister Lillian, it doesn't matter the sins that you have. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that if a man is born in Christ, he becomes a new creature. He said, Behold, all things have passed away and all things become new. It doesn't matter who you were. I don't want to start mentioning different magnitudes of sins. They just know that no matter what you have done in the past, they, as long as you have said this, simple prayer your sins have been forgiven now is the time for you to pick your bible and feel yourself as we conclude Amen. we are going to bow uh, talk pray a little mm. as we conclude yes mighty everlasting father thank you we thank you for this moment without you thank we can do this Give we thank you precious holy spirit for bringing us this moment Mighty everlasting Father, we come before your throne of grace. For those who are watching, it's not by coincidence that you are not in the kitchen or you are not somewhere traveling that you are not able to listen to this program. But for you to be somewhere that you are able to tune to this program, it's not by coincidence, it's just a divine arrangement. Father, we want to thank you that you have kept these souls, that so many souls didn't have the opportunity to see this year, so many didn't have the opportunity to see this month, so many didn't have the opportunity to see this moment, but you have kept them so far right up to this moment. Maybe they didn't, ha they don't, they didn't have an opportunity to say thank you, 
the Father on our behalf and the behalf of, on the behalf of those who are watching right now. We want to thank you for all that you have done for their life. Thank you, Jesus. And for their sins, your Thank word you, says in Romans 3, 23, that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we thank God for the prayer of Minister Lillian that has washed away the sins of those who are watching and including those of us in the studio and has given us a new life in Christ Jesus. Yes. Father, even as we go through the rest of this evening, oh Lord, you said in your word, it's a book of Isaiah 41, 10, 11. We say, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Psalm 91, say, He that dwelleth in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Father, we thank you for your word in Psalm 23. For we know the Lord is our shepherd, and we shall not beg for bread. This is the assurance that you have given us, your children. Thank you, mighty and everlasting Father, as we go through the rest of this day. Guide us yeah. as we, until we meet here again next week. In yeah. Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, viewers. This is your midweek program. We will be here again next week, um, Wednesday, same time. We pray God that it's possible because with God all things are possible. We can't do it by our own power. And it Amen. may not be my honorable minister Lillian. We may have another minister from a different part of the world. Thank you Amen. very much for watching and stay tuned to this program. Amen. Bye.